So in this video, I'm going to explain what the lack operon is, and I'm going to explain how it works. So for some background information, the lac operon is present in bacteria. And normally, the proteins that are needed to break down lactose are turned off because the bacteria would prefer to use glucose. And the lac operon is essentially just a fancy way of saying all of the genes that have to do with lactose breakdown. So as you can see over here, you have the lac Z, lac Y, and lac A. And those are all going to encode for proteins that are going to help break down lactose. So normally in bacteria, it's going to be like this. If there's glucose around, you're going to have a repressor that is bound to this operator region. And that's going to prevent the RNA polymerase from transcribing the LAC operon. So the LAC Z, LAC Y, and LAC A. And that makes sense because if you have glucose around, you don't need to break down lactose. And we'll get into the situations where the LAC operon is on or off in a few minutes. But to continue with the background information, this operon is, the term for this LAC operon is inducible because it's normally off, but it can be induced when there is high lactose and no glucose around. And one last thing to mention is that the LAC operon isn't a simple on and off switch. It's more like a light dimmer. So what I mean by that is when if you have a ton of lactose, you could turn it on a lot so you can create a lot of the proteins that are going to break down lactose. But if you only have a little bit of lactose, you're probably not going to create that many proteins just because it's essentially a waste of energy. So one really important thing to remember in terms of the lac operon is that it will only be turned on if you don't have glucose and you have a lot of lactose. So if you have glucose and lactose both present, the operon will still be off because it's gonna use up all of the glucose. The bacteria is gonna use up all of the glucose first before it decides to resort to using up lactose. The way you can remember it is just the bacteria likes glucose a lot better than lactose. And as a result, it's gonna to wanna to use that first before it uses lactose. So as we stated normally, if you look over here, normally the LAC operon is off because you have a lot of glucose around. And so you see that there is a repressor. It doesn't actually look like a block. It's going to be more of a blob. But either way, the repressor is going to bind to this part of the DNA sequence to prevent the transcription of the LAC operon and the genes needed to break down lactose. So if you look down here, you can remove the repressor if you have lactose. So if you have lactose around, you're going to remove the repressor. But keep in mind, I just said that if you have glucose and lactose both present, the operon will still be turned off. So it doesn't show it in this diagram, but I'm just going to briefly explain it. The reason why you need essentially no glucose for the transcription to actually occur is because when the glucose is low, the bacteria is essentially starved. So then that's going to increase the levels of cyclic AMP. And then cyclic AMP is a signaling molecule. Then you have a protein called the cyclic AMP receptor protein. So when this cyclic AMP receptor protein binds to the cyclic AMP, which is created when you have low glucose, it's going to bind to the LAC promoter. And so the promoter is essentially this region over here. And then it's going to turn on the transcription. So this is a little complicated, and I understand that. So I'm going to go over it again and just kind of summarize what we learned. So if you have a lot of glucose and no lactose, you're going to be in this situation. So a lot of glucose and no lactose means you don't need to create proteins that break down lactose. So you're going to have the repressor bound. Now, if you have a lot of both glucose and lactose, try to imagine just the repressor being removed, but you still don't create the proteins if you have a lot of glucose and lactose. So 
the main thing from this video that I want you to remember is that the LAC operon is only turned on when you have a high amount of lactose and no glucose. So that pretty much sums it up for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please type them down below. I hope you liked the video and found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.